Hey guys, it's Marcus with Horror Junkies of Utah coming at you today to talk about Fear the Walking Dead, episode 5, and thanks for tuning in on this one. We're running solo, so it's just going to be me tonight talking about this, and let's just start out with some of the things that happened in the episode and how it all opens up. So basically, we open up with uh, the military kind of in this quarantine zone. And we got Nick in there, and he's in, like, a makeshift cell with another gentleman. And from there, we start to kind of figure out, you know, the militaries they're doing some kind of shady stuff. And we got um, Mr. Travis Manawa and Madison Clark, and they are kind of wondering, you know, Where's our son? Where did you take our son? Obviously, it's Madison's son, Travis's stepson, whatever you want to call him. But it, it, it's getting interesting because we got like this little bit of turmoil, family turmoil going on. And we got the Salazars, and they end up kidnapping um, Mr. Daniel Salazar, kidnaps, well, not kidnaps, but captures, whatever you want to call it, um, the soldier that's kind of... Uh, love struck by his daughter, and he starts torturing him. And Madison kind of figures this out, but Daniel's like, you know, I've been through this before. We got to do this. We got to figure out where our people are. You know, when they're taken away on military vehicles, they don't end up coming back. And that's interesting. We kind of get like a backstory to Daniel. You know, was he this military informant guy, or what? 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 What was he in his country? from where he came from, but so Madison's like, yeah, you know, I, I, I want to figure out where my son's at, and then we come into this kind of complex situation, because you can tell that her character doesn't want um, the torture of this young gentleman, but she wants her son back, and she's forced into this dilemma of, well, do I let this happen and figure out where my son's at, or do I oppose this and you know she goes more with the way of I think she's kind of just ignoring the fact she kind of like oh yeah do it but I don't want to be around and figure out where they went and Travis figures out later uh, about this whole scenario but they reveal you know hey there's this code word and it's for the evacuation in the military and not for you guys so kind of interesting you know Daniel, he uh, he's pretty uh, blunt and just like, hey, I'm doing it this way. You don't like it. I don't give a shit. But that being said, he talks to this gentleman that he's torturing almost like he's just kind of like, uh, you know, I've done this before. Here we go. But he does get the information that he needs. Um, he comes off as a little bit of of uh kind of creep when he was doing it but hey you know he got what he needed um but you know that's interesting he's kind of one of those people that's just almost ready for this situation where everyone else is kind of still living in the shadows um and then we got Travis he ends up going on this uh escorted military journey and trying to get to this uh to this hospital area um but they end up getting sidetracked and when the first sidetrack happens these military guys pull over and they're like you know what we see a uh, a dead zombie over there a dead lady you're gonna be the one to kill that lady Travis and he's like oh no 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 I'm not I'm not shooting anyone and it's like he still believes that these people can be helped and the military um gentlemen are like hey you know so if you think she can still be helped, you're calling us killers. And that was an interesting scene to me as well. It kind of um, broke down to where is, like, where's your humanity lie? And, like, Travis is obviously this huge humanitarian guy. Like, no, we need to help everybody. And I don't want to kill anybody. And he's forced with this situation. Like, so are you calling us murderers because you send us out here to do your dirty work? Or are you willing to show us that you can do this as well? And the way that situation ends is how we all kind of predicted it to end. Travis is like, I can't do it. 
Um, and then they end up sidetracked um, trying to help this unit that's kind of pinned down. Um, some shooting happens, which I thought was really cool. You kind of hear the carnage. You don't see it, but you hear it over the military radio from Travis's perspective because he's left inside their Humvee. Um, so that was kind of like eerie to hear these people screaming, yelling, and all these bullets going off, but we're not able to actually see what's going on. And then these the rainy, remaining soldiers come out of this uh, complex and... They're like, you know, uh, we'll drop you off as close to the hospital as we can get you to. But, hey, man, we're out of here. We're we're AWOL. We're going back to our families. And I thought that was interesting, too. We're, si- we're finally seeing not just the crumble of society, but the crumbling of the things we think are supposed to be there to protect us. And it kind of adds a human aspect into these military characters you know, because we all kind of think, oh, they're just the military, they're doing their job, blah, blah, blah. But they actually have families too and things that they want to do. And in this situation, they're kind of seeing that this is all foobar, so say, and they're kind of done with it as well. And their kind of main leader, he's kind of on a power trip. But, you know, the episode was, it was okay at most. It still, I think, is running way too slow and not showing some of the things that I really would like to have seen with this uh, this Fear the Walking Dead Season 1. And, you know, it's been renewed for Season 2. We'll see what that has to hold for us. Um, I'm not too excited. Even when I seen, you know, stay tuned for scenes from the next episode when they did that. I watched it. I'm like, oh, God, it looks boring as well. I just can't stay very intrigued in this, and I don't know why. I feel like I felt more carnage from The Walking Dead's pilot episode than I have this whole um, season, you know. But who knows, maybe it will pick up um, with season two, or maybe this season finale will just blow everything out of the water and it will be amazing because we did end with the fact that they locked a lot of people into that uh, stadium and uh, Mr. Daniel Salazar actually ends up going out there. And what's he doing out there? Is he gonna? Is he looking? Is he gonna release the beast? <laughs> what is he gonna do here? You know, and he doesn't know that his wife's actually passed away yet in that hospital, which was an interesting and intriguing scene in itself. Um, kind of showing the medical aspect of it, you know, we got these people, and when they die, we have to, you know, shoot this little cattle prod into their head and eliminate them so they don't come back after us, and so we have seen the destruction of society, I wouldn't say we've seen it, but we know that it's gone, and now those support beams that are supposed to be there to help us in times of turmoil, they're falling down too. So what is season two going to uh, bring for us? I don't know. You know, you guys let me know what you think, what you thought of this episode. And, you know, check us out on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, you know it. Share this video, um, like, comment, subscribe. Let us know how we're doing. We got a couple really good videos coming up this weekend, so stay tuned. I'm Marcus with the Horror Junkies of Utah. We'll catch you guys for the season finale of Fear the Walking Dead. For now, you guys have a great night, and we'll see you a little later. Bye-bye.